traversed the tombs of Naxxramas. We've climbed every cliff on Black Rock. Now the world cries out for heroes. As a new evil rises, there will be danger. There will be doom. There will be ancient temples filled with relics, treasures, and traps. Who will answer the call? We will be explorers lead, and we are in need of explorers. And then should we seek, cross land and sea, born to come and join us. Welcome back, everyone, to the SL I League Star Series. I'm Noxious with me, Frodan, who just uh, took a little bit of a nap to help himself get back to life. I Thanks guess. for selling me out, Noxious. Yes. <laughs> I'll remember that. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I do it once in a while. No, yeah, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was feeling a little jet lag, so I took yeah, a little right. nap. Thanks for covering for me, by the way. Uh, but I heard the games were pretty fun. Yeah, and they, they now were. Now we've come out. down to like out. a potential three-way tie, which is just absolutely crazy. If uh, if, it, if the series is won by Kalento 3-0, I think is an exact three-way tie. Exactly. And the thing is, Kalento ultimately doesn't, I don't want to say he doesn't care, he does care about winning because it's going to decide whether or not he's seeded in the semifinals or the quarterfinals. Right. Uh, but he does go through the top two no matter what. So it's all about where he's going to be seated. So he wants to win, uh, which means if he does, the other players are going to have to, you know, I guess, split uh, to figure out who ends up where because it's going to be a full tie. Yeah, and then the dream is still alive for uh, everybody. I think yeah. Dog is the one that people were saying swaying the most because yeah. if the record was 3-1, then I believe Dog would have the worst record, meaning he's eliminated. So there is a lot of permutations of how yeah. this can actually turn out depending on the results. So this one going to be pretty exciting. Every single game matters here. Yeah, so before we go, we have a Kalento interview to hear his thoughts on the games. So enjoy that. Compared to other players, I guess I do play often. Not so much lately. I try not to accept too many tournaments so I can stream more often. But still, many tournaments. I guess if, if uh, other players just, if to count all um, open qualifiers player can participate in, then probably not so many. But like premier tournaments and invites, a lot. Like for BlizzCon qualifier, I was uh, on LAN right before I needed some index. And I, sh I just put some random decks, I think, like, I wasn't confident about them. So I went like 1-2 in qualifiers, didn't go into regional qualifiers. Uh, so I think that affected me somehow. That I was on, on land tournament during the deck submission. Um, it's, it's always better to have at least like three days before even before tournaments, before deck submission part, um, so you can prepare them better. So, we've got the last game of the day. Sorry, resting yeah. back in the chair again, because um, we're all sleeping here. It's okay. It's, you know, it's, late, not, it's, man. it's not illegal to lean back uh, noxious. In fact, it's no one to fall will asleep, you. I guess, on the cast. But uh, we've got the last match of the day, which was going to be the sixth and last. We're going to have six more tomorrow. Uh, but I, I want to know what Kalento is going to do here because we saw him play Murloc Paladin a little bit mm -hmm. earlier, which was a little bit of a bait and switch because he kept talking before the tournament about you know how unsure he was that the deck would work well, or yeah. something along those lines. Specifically, yeah. I remember we were talking in a circle and saying like, yeah, what do you think about the strength of Murloc Paladin? That's one of my favorite questions to ask players these days because I think a lot of them are split yeah. on it. Some of them That's saying, true. nah, it's just a gimmick. <laughs> Another them are like, no, like it's legitimately top tier yeah. uh, show from Team Liquid. Uh, you know, Team Liquid uh, uh, being able to have good, strong players like Savitz and Dog. Um, the show was like, no, I think this deck is legitimately broken. Uh, if Secret Paladin was not so oppressive the way it was, this deck would just blow everything out of the water. So I was like, oh, that's really interesting the way. Yeah, you it reminds it me out. a little bit of uh, the Patron versus Secret Pally situation where you have kind of a standoff between both. Sure. But then Patron got completely obliterated and Secret Pally took over a little bit so of the. What if forth. Mysterious Challenge yeah. is nerfed the way everyone wants to be? Is that really what you want? Murlocs all day on ladder, getting comboed from Murloc. Yeah, I guess, I guess 36 health. You're going to see five Murlocs. <laughs> Maybe three different ones, uh, ultimately. So the players are getting ready to get into their last match. It's a really big... There's a lot at stake here for uh, the Chinese player. A lot. Uh, sure. I mean, you come all the way from China. Uh, you know, Chinese community is really brutal, noxious. 
they are super hard on their players. Like, I can't even begin to describe how much... It's not even the fact that they just lose to non-Chinese players. It's, it's just more about, like, a lot of Chinese community think Chinese players are just bad. And they, 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 wow, always look really? at, they hold the West to the high standards. You know, they look at Colento, who they respect a lot. They call him K-God for short. Um, they look at even guys like Raynan, they hold him the highest team. Even though Raynan is not the most accomplished Western player, but they like look at them very <laughs> like sure. respectfully. But they look at Chinese players and they're like, nah, you guys are bad. You guys are like so shameful, da, 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 et cetera. Really? Uh, so I it's, like, it's kind of like you know, rough life to be a Chinese player sometimes because you don't get recognition for being good at all. It's like the Chinese players, there's, like, there's, a, there's a lot of them, and a lot of them are good. Um, so yeah, when you do go respected. out there to represent, I guess, the country, mm -hmm. you got to make the motherland proud. Yeah, and of course, when you win, everyone's just like, eh. <laughs> but if you lose True. the comments, it's always like that, there's, there's hundreds <laughs> of comments just like making uh, fun of them and stuff. You're absolutely bad. You shouldn't have coined out on turn of one. Not a good idea. Yeah, but Glento, yeah. playing the rogue, the only rogue in the event, by the way. Um, it's great. And it well, the event, I don't know about edge. tomorrow, of course. We don't have all the deck lists, but for today, we didn't see anyone else. And I really thought Dog would take advantage of the fact that rogue was a strong point of his, and that it's also not that poorly, uh, that doing poorly in the meta game. Ouch! Wow, that yeah. opening double trog <laughs> on coin. Uh, um, well, I mean, there is double trog. However, there are scenarios where you just don't get overload, and then it's just basically like a void walker. <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> might be one of them. The thing is, right now with the Earth Shock, yeah, uh, the Doomsayer is not going to answer it. That is a massive. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is a very I good just, start. Yeah, Clunto's going to drop the Doomsayer, and then he's going to Earth get Earth shocked, and then you just start taking a Escape lot of damage. Conceived. You have to give uh, equality, it's, pyro, it's not, or consecration. It's not escape concede just yet. In fact, if Clunto picks up, is it a second Doomsayer? Does that change anything? Second Doomsayer wouldn't work. Uh, I don't think. Cause I mean, yeah, the because the juggler being already down. Actually, wait, things might change now. I, I was expecting the double trog. Oh wow, is this real? The really funny thing about Sir Finley Murgleton is he throws such a big wrench into plans. The first thing is that he's another Murloc for anything can happen. But even like, <laughs> but even like yeah. the Murloc Tide uh, War Leader, sure. that buffs it to a three four, and then you're just like, uh, crap. Yeah, <laughs> as a Blue Guild Warrior, you wouldn't necessarily mind too much because it's like it's a non-issue. But the War Leader making it, what is it, a three four? Oh yeah, it'd be it's a three a four. Ridiculous oh no, body, a three. So. Yeah, 3 4 basically. Yeah, it's ridiculously big. So it trades into the more leader very good, and it's st still a 1 1 left over. Yeah, and the Trogs are also out of range of consecration. Likewise for Feral Spirits and Finley. Totem Golem is also a really big issue when it's played on Cur. So. A couple of things here. Uh, the first is the obvious overload with the Feral Spirits. Um, but if you can play this and you crackle, then you also develop, and you can play the, the Spirits the afterwards. Yeah, I like the. You crackle now and then. The last option is Sir Finley, but I think you want to do that as you develop. And that ends up being okay. Like, Clento absorbed a lot of damage with that Murloc. Clento said that was a mistake. Okay. So what did Clento <laughs> think was a mistake? Or is that just... Uh, well, if... Uh, if he wanted to crackle before it, he'd lose the overload. So exactly. I'm pretty sure that's the right sequence of stuff. Likewise. All right. Well, Clento's going to shut down yeah. one of these trogs. If he gets to anything, can happen. Maybe. Yeah. Um, and I mean, that's going to be even, painful. That's really just. So now he's needing. Well, I mean the the. Doomsayer is resorting a lot of damage, but he still needs to stop taking damage at this point. He needs a pyro. Oh, goodness. That's one mana off from a clear. So what, how much damage is there on the board? 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You expect to be dead next turn if you don't clear. If you don't at least kill something. But killing a wolf or not killing a wolf makes no difference, right? Yeah, you take two damage either way. So your best bet is either to, to kill out the juggler now Consecration now, basically, and, and then, then hope, hope for a spell. Hope for Pyromancer to do something next turn. Or you can wait one more turn and be really optimistic. 
and generally optimism is the death of control decks. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Kale I mean, there's a chance that Kalento is also able to pull off um, just a boring spell like Sun Vigil next turn. Like he just attacks a wolf and then plays Pyro Sun Vigil. That's another out in the deck to enable the. Uh, Okay, so he just attacks this, passes over, so that uh, Th he can have his minion challenge a little bit more. And that Le is... Lethal, I think. Is it? Yeah. Uh, perhaps not. Wait. He's looking it's at four, 12. Seven, okay, nine. yeah, he's, not, he's expecting to die, Whoa. but he's not dead. Right. Yeah. So here we go, Sir Finley Mergleton. And he's looking for hunter hero power. That's generally the best one. Druid I mean, hero power is okay. If the two minions hit face, let's say let's say the knife goes face here. Fire blast is okay. Life tap is it's also best, pretty yeah. good too. Uh oh. Do you try for left for a thirty-three percent to win immediately. One three for the win. Nope. Nope. Not this turn. But then there's a problem of the leper gnome dying. Which and is also that also triggers my PTSD. Yeah, this is this is not gonna be winnable for Kalanda. There's almost no way. It had to be Solemn Vigil right here, and Kalanda's gonna try to just clear, but he's gonna be exact range of the Rockbiter to finish it off. So a very quick game number one. And you know what, man? The Agro Shaman, it's always underestimated, but it's still so powerful. Yeah, I don't think it changed at all. Like, it was super popular initially when the expansion came out because people figured out a way to play Shaman. Wow, what a big uh, relief that was. Yeah, like you don't but instantly lose yeah. and like turn five <laughs> or six. What? I don't know, what's up with that? I thought that's what he did, like tier thrall. I just remember, like, when Sean came out as a, with a new deck oh. that was viable, people were yeah. happy. Yeah, I and know, I know. I know you read those meta snapshots, Noxious. Meta you snapshots. Get it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What was it on the tier for meta snapshots? Like, tier one, two? <laughs> so it was kind of a meme. Um, tier four was populated by only Shaman decks. Oh. Like, it was just mid range Shaman. Mid, mid range would be like tier th Like, Mali three, Shaman. Four. Yeah, like everything. And, kind of well, tier four was just kind of accepted as like, this exists, but it's just bad. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's a deck. Like, you could put 30 cards together in this order, you know? Spell damage. And rogue. then all of a sudden, Aggro Shaman came out and it hit rank and just like. Every, the entire group voted as number one. Not because it was the best deck, but they felt like it was the most powerful deck to ladder because it was this. It was a very cheap deck, right. it was very effective, and it wasn't very hard to play the Aggro Shaman compared to um, Secret Paladin yeah, the, or Midrange Druid. The first time I, I saw like Elemental Destruction in it was an Insomnia. I saw Xixo bring the uh, like Elemental yep. Destruction in the deck, which made it a lot more uh -huh. powerful against some other decks. But and you know who was the mastermind behind that? Go ahead. It was Kalento, the guy who always does the, ah, yeah. you know, this is two or three cards off from being perfect. <laughs> that is Kalento's uh. thing. I remember asking him, Kalento, what do you think about innovation? He says, in Hearthstone, you can't innovate. You take good decks and you make them perfect. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> it was like a Star That's Ladder, exactly first what Star innovation thing, is, me. Kalento. Maybe he yeah. uh, misunderstood. The yeah, it, it was just funny. He said, there's no new decks. There's never a new deck. There's oh, okay. That's what he meant. So, uh, I yeah. guess that's what he meant. The fact that nothing is completely new out of the blue, because what happens, everything keeps getting optimized a little sure, bit Sure, you refine it. But Rogue being one of them, too. Clunto absolutely bringing the Dr. Boom. That wasn't, I think, his idea, but I know a few other people have been experimenting with it. Um, your teammate, JJ, is also a guy yeah. who's been pushing it in. Uh, Mr. Yogurt, or Mr. Yogurt, whatever Yogurt, you want to call him. Yeah. 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 I feel Mr. Yogurt would have been such a better name. but He missed out. Um, he just flipped up his name, that's it. Taking a look at Kalento's hand here, he has backstab and SI, or sorry, backstab being Cleef. Um, chooses to play the SI here. I guess it's just because the Van Cleef would be too weak. But he's a 4 4. It's nothing to yeah. scoff at when Paladin's not even. Like the fact that he's got yeah. Coin Truce Lover as a possible response yeah, makes you just not want to do it. I was thinking about it for a second, and then when Clunto just goes ahead and plays SI, it makes the most sense. Yeah, because you get a 3 3, which dies to the same stuff. Right, you can use the combo for so many other better things here. Taking a look at the Murloc Paladin hand, 
It's very slow and doesn't have many draw. So after the muster and the true silver being played, there's really nothing he's going to be doing afterwards outside of just trying to remove on board with these cards. So Shabu is trying to evaluate what's the best way to approach this here. It's kind of a weird, like I, I haven't really considered this matchup too much. On one end, I want to say Rogue is able to like put enough burst together that they can deny like a big lay on hands turn. Um, which 8 health might not mean much if you're going to get flurried for so much damage. But the problem is they also spend the entire game removing the 1-1s. One so it's a lot of damage good. gets kind of wasted away. I would say that Rogue is generally very good against Paladin. Yeah. Every form of Paladin. If it can get its proper sweeps, like the Fan of Knives, if you get the Blade Flurries off, um, and then there's just big combo damage the same way that you can handle any other deck. So I would, I think that Rogue generally has very good win percentages against Paladin. Yeah. And by very good, I mean 55, 55 60. 55, 60, yeah. 65. <laughs> For Rogue, it's very good. Yeah. I mean, it reminds me a little bit of Priest. Like, they can heal all game long, but it doesn't matter too much. Um. Rogue isn't very defensive, though. What the, the most important thing that you have to consider when playing a Rogue deck is how, what kind of initiative do you gain? In this case, Klemto can build up a kind of a board. I mean, I like a big Van Cleef in a spot like this because the nothing in Paladin deck really kills it. Right. And Aldor, Aldor might negate it, but then you're curving into a 5-5, and that's going to put up a, even more pressure. So. Never mind. And, <laughs> I mean, you might not. That's kind it, of the reason yeah, why you're always afraid of building up the super big Van Cleef, but it's okay. Kalento has Sprint after um, a couple turns and picks up preparation and can do it even earlier. Yeah, I mean, he's curving well for now. Like, he's got the Lothab coming up. Mm -hmm. A turn likely going to find another play by the time uh, he gets to turn six. It also takes the entire attention away from SIS 7 Agent, which is sneaking in more damage. And again, if Klanto can pick up some card to give him initiative, uh, he's in a pretty good spot here. Yeah, another sprint, not decent, exactly though. where you're looking for, but if you can just get it in a control matchup like this one, it's going to go long, so you'll get to draw twice. I like the attack, because the dagger most likely will clean up, because you know your opponent doesn't have a lot of spells to do anything wonky, so uh, you're just going to use your dagger and hero power with Thanos. Heal bot pretty big just to just can keep the spiraling damage away from his face. You know, he doesn't want to be in the, in the position where just a single oil flurry oh, will wow. be threatening. Yeah. Yeah, this big time draw. Pretty big draw there. If he picks up another backstab, could also use the Blood Mage for that. Although I suspect he'll try to get a big sweep with Blood Mage at some point instead of trying to just use it for smaller plays. Lothab sticking on the board, though, another problematic thing. Uh, Shabu can remove it with the Bluegill Warrior. Yeah. Kalento getting every point of damage that he can, oh, and nicely man. done. Not a bad draw, either. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> nicely done. Yeah, nicely done. Uh. It's like, yeah, good job, man, <laughs> drawing that. We, ha we have to emphasize just how demanding it is to get the good draws. Totally, I wonder man. here, like, you got Lay on Hands. That heals him up again. Um, he's got the other heal bot. Yep. He can nullify the attack of Lotha with the uh, the Aldor if he wants mm -hmm. to. Do you though? Like, do yeah, you quote unquote so. waste the Aldor on this, knowing there might be like an oiled up minion you have to kill? No, I think the really only thing that you're really concerned about wasting the Aldor on, quote unquote, is uh, the Van Cleef who's just been used. Yeah, so sure. I think tossing in the Aldor here is perfectly viable. In fact, it might be the best play because I don't think you want to use True Silver and take the damage. I mean, it depends if you think you're going to get the heal bot next turn into Lay on Hands. Because, I mean, Dr. Boom's around, right? That's that's another consideration. That is something to consider. Yeah, you're right. Dr. I Boom in the deck, that does change it. So yeah. maybe holding on to the Peacekeeper is okay. But I generally still think it's very effective here. And that's going to make Kalento consider if he wants to play it slow or fast. If he plays it slow, he can sprint one more time. No, he can't. He's he a seven card. Yeah. I mean, he could probably a find a zero cost card to play. Yeah. But. The but alternative then is to just play a Belcher and re-equip the weapon, so that way yeah. you can st threaten a huge flurry. I kind of like that because if two minions are used to attack into your Belcher, then 
worst case scenario. Oh, wow, all right. Going for the flurry immediately, and the SI getting as much tempo as possible. This is Kalento at work. Yeah, Kalento is known for making this very is, aggressive yeah, plays, and absolutely. a lot of people disagree, to say the least. Uh, and it's, it's that's also been one of the most fascinating things about Kalento, because so many players take different lines than he would to try and be aggressive. Uh, but I like it, you know? I like the idea that Kalento says, you know what, I'm just going to push some cards on the board. I have a uh, sprint to back me up, and I'm going to give zero opportunity for my opponent to ever have board control. Yeah, right. and Sullen Vigil gets denied as well. Yeah, there's, true. Uh, and now, there's merits to that, a lot of it. Now Kalento's perfectly happy. If Before, his Bolcher would have died. Yeah, and he would have had to start rebuilding. Mm hmm as opposed to uh, just keeping it safe. And there's yeah. nothing Paladin does in a spot like this that's amazing besides Pyromancer plays. Almost nothing. Yeah, so Leon Hand's going to stall a little bit longer. Another True Silver, no health. Consecration is going to be useful at some point. <laughs> well. Picks up just more of the cards that he had <laughs> in his hand. Like Chromagus. Ooh. That's what it is. Spectator figured out the way to open up the sarcophagus. That's pretty clever. It is 2-1-3. How do you open the the Mergleton thing in the top right? Isn't there like a, uh, a What, you safe? can open that? Yeah. No way. Yeah, you can. You just have to know the secret switch. Oh. Uh, to open Mergleton, yeah. Okay. Today I learned. Look at you, Noxious. Prepping for the next Jeparino already. Oh, God. I am never going to win another Jeparino. I, I think I've been slacking way too hard. <laughs> it's like you uh, know every answer to Jeparino and you have a very functionally happy family as well. It's like you just win at life, not just a we, functionally we happy it. family. Well, because the, the, the joke is the more you know, the less likely, the less you, likely you, <laughs> you are probably like, you know, oh, meet no. someone nice and start a family. <laughs> <laughs> That's really depressing, Froden. No, Thanks for this. You you won. You win, Noxious. Okay. Even if you lose. All good things come to an you end. Win. Is that it? Wow, now that's a depressing <laughs> thing. <laughs> oh, you're just pushing it today. Sludge Belcher, is is it run as like a one of in most Paladin, Murloc Pally? I can't find room for two of those, will, the, will you? Uh, usually Something. one of is what it is, because you don't want to be clogging up your hand too much. Uh, you, you generally want like some kind of card draw in early game board for persons. Clanto plays the Tomb Pillager. This card is very interesting. I know people... Once again, just like many other decisions that Clento makes, or even other players, they're split on it. Team Pillager is great when you can get with the coin, but if you're replacing things like Pilot Shredder, which is generally very sticky on the board, and you have a lot of oil synergy with it, then you're giving up a very powerful card. So, I don't know. I think the way he's playing it is kind of like... Uh a throwaway card is you play it when you know your board's gonna die and you say I don't really care if it does because I get something out of it a little bit like Shredder except in this case you kind of turn it into more possible tempo I'm still a fan though yeah. I like Kalento being so aggressive here and puts Xiaobu into an awkward spot every turn I mean and, and his Murloc yeah. game is far from developed at this point he's got almost nothing in the way of Murlocs What's great too is that it sort it somewhat baits out another presence of the Belcher being played here, and then you can sap it again. Double consec. He's already played one, so there's consecration Belcher. It's kind of it feels bad. If you true silver, you take damage. Ah, uh, true silver. Oh man. Yikes. Yeah, indeed. But he's gonna. Does well, he follow it up with the Doomsayer? I feel like you kind of have to. Because you have nowhere to, like, if you had equality pyro, probably not. Um, could you ever justify a heal bot over this? No, because then you only gain three life by doing that. So Doomsayer it is, and you're going to pray that this doesn't have one eviscerate. Just the one. I really love the way Clinto played this this uh, game, just by being able to put Pout into a position and where you never it. have initiative. And that is a very commanding game number two victory here for Kalento to even up the series. It's interesting because Kalento plays the deck himself. It's in his lineup, yeah. so he knows how the deck plays. And you can tell that he already understands how to win against it. Like every, every bit of it is already figured yeah. out. You know, Kalento streamed this deck, I believe, to top three legend. 
The uh, Merlot Paladin? I want to th say it was rank 3 legend. However, I will stand corrected if someone can send me a screenshot or let me know. Yeah. And he was streaming it for several hours, and then eventually, like he lost, and he was like, "Ah, screw it! I'll just like make some other deck." Yeah, make something else. But, but he played it very well and piloted it to the top ends of the EU ladder. It reminds me a bit of like mid-range Demon Lock. Um, in the way, the not the way it plays, sorry, but the way the, that it developed, and that it came out, nobody really had a functional list. Um, or one that you could really play super well. And they were trying to hybridize too much between Zoo and Handlock. And Kalento came up with the perfect middle ground of like demons and uh, like a Zoo presence. It was really interesting to watch. And Kalento's doing the same thing with pretty much every deck when I see him bring it up. I like it. That's what he's known for. Yeah. For better or for worse, some of the versions that he's tweaked didn't work out very well. For one mid -range of the, demon one of the decks. Or no, no, I'm just saying that Kalento's not perfect. No, no, no. Despite no. the fact that <laughs> it might sound True. like he is from the yeah. way we're hyping him up. <laughs> he's made some decisions that are he, he even admits are bad. The one thing that comes to mind is his Dragon Priest list. He was tweaking Dragon Priest and he played like Divine Spirit and it just wasn't very effective. Like, like, he was, trying was he to playing play. Confuse in it? Like as a one-of? No. It was just like okay. Divine Spirits and he had the Dragonkin Sorcerers. He had Oh, gotcha. Other so, stuff. like, the so whole buff, it, a little bit yeah, of buff. Yeah, uh, it just was a little bit too much too much synergy yeah. and not enough initiative, which Dragon Priest needs to take. And he admitted that it was not very good. I think he also had the Light Bane, Dark Bane sisters in there. I'm not That's sure. That's interesting. It's an interesting approach. One day we'll have, like, cool. a mid-range Priest that works. It was cool, but Kalento was like, yeah, it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, it looks like Kalento on the zoo versus uh, Xiaobo, I think, was playing a Reno lock. We yes. saw the Reno Jackson he, earlier. He so. plays the traditional Reno lock. Not the Funny combo that we version. say it as yeah. if it is a long-standing classic <laughs> deck, but... <laughs> It is yeah. the one that we know the most commonly. It has Fugin and Stalag, two one ofs, so that way you can summon Thaddeus. It's a very unique twist onto the deck when League of Explorers came out. I think it makes a lot of sense because you're getting three threats into th in two threats, and the goal of the deck is to pack as much uh, as you can in one, right. which is why you're trying. Like I remember Liz that ran two peddlers. Um, but that's why it's so cool. Yeah. When Reno Jackson first was viewed by the community as, I have to play 30 individual cards, how am I going to get legitimate threats that I'd like to get out with the Warlock <laughs> Hero Power? Sure. And if you can install, it's like, oh, of course, those work in tandem. You don't even have to go out of your yeah. way to play them. And the thing is, the way the Stalag works yeah. is you're able to actually bait out really prime, like premium removal, like BGH, that doesn't hit the bigger minions later on. Do you think Reno Warlock would play the Hunter legendaries, if it was available. If it was available, them. I'm actually. Like, <laughs> Probably I, I'm, not. I'm, I might play Dreadscale. Yeah, Acid you know. Maw is just bad. Actually, in like, the Warlock, fact that it kills your own in minions. Warlock, you could. Like, I think it's Twisting Nether just makes you want to never play Acid Maw. Like, <laughs> the fact that Acid Maw exists is uh, a little bit of a farce, it feels sometimes. But it is definitely it's a fun flavor. Yeah. Thing because you get to see how it interacts in World of Warcraft and how it does in Hearthstone. That's part of what makes it really cool. I like the choice of the Soul Fire because it gives you some additional reach. And you need to burst the Reno Lockdown yeah. if you're ever hoping to win. Some Sometimes you're always afraid to push in too far because of Molten Giant or Taunt, but this gives you that final little bit of reach that might be able to push you over the hump. Now, if you're looking at Xiao Bu's hand, you're wondering what to do. We have not many good answers for you. You've yeah, got only three. <laughs> not wondering what to do. There is almost nothing to do. It feels like, but you you have to. He's got three playable cards. Yeah. And do you ever just play like Defender, and keep Sun Fury? Probably not. The big problem with Reno Lock that it faces in some matchups is that you give up your taunt, you give up your AOE, yeah. you give up your. Molten. Well, the really. consistency of what Handlock has, let's say, or even well, mid-range deck. Well, is surprisingly consistent, despite the 30 individual cards, yeah. because of the hero power. And he does end up playing Defender Vargas on curve because he doesn't want to take any more damage. All right. So he's hoping that he can swing with Molten Giant and maybe even Shadow Flame. We'll see. Yeah, his next turn is going to be kind of the, de the, the turn that determines how uh, the game ends, basically. Sure. So with a Molten Shadow Flame, 
That does that mean he dies? It does because he does die in this case. Uh, yeah. Oh no! Actually, he can wait. mortal coil afterwards, right? He can kill one of them, but then abusive soulfire wins. But only. Oh, you are correct. The spider spawn. Ah, that's too bad. If he had one more mana, yeah. he could play the Sun Fury and then Shadow Flame the Sun Fury. Yeah, he could actually Reno. Oh, you can just Reno yeah, Jackson. Like, you're right. Work. That would have been also great. So close and yet so far, because I don't think there's a zero mana card in his deck that can save him. What what could there be? I don't even know one in the game. Target dummy. Oh yeah, <laughs> you're right. I know because I played a lot of Summoning Stone Rogue. You, you tried playing Summoning Stone Rogue? I tried. Y you did? I used to climb to Legend one season. This is good. Yeah, when Digi awesome. came out. Well, I, I used to climb like rank three, and then I used another deck to push rank three to Legend. So. All right, Kalento. well, Kalento is up two to one. Very dominant performance today. And uh, opening up, paving the way for the three-way tie, at least. Uh, it's definitely a possibility with... Last win he has to get. Did he? His druid was banned, so the Murloc Paladins, the, the deck that he has left to win with. That's right. And yeah. he has the Warlock and. The Mirror Mash, I the, think. Yeah, the Mirror Mash that we saw is a potential for shenanigans. Now, I want to see the Mirror Match. The Mirror Match is really fun. The Mirror Match is ridiculous, is it's what it so is. It's so fun because <laughs> it's, some, it's, it's somewhat like. Uh, uh. Mind control the games. The mind control games, yeah. yeah. Whoever plays the se the first anything generally loses. <laughs> yeah, because the second one just summons a universe of Murlocs. Quite possibly. Yeah. And there is, like, the whole pressure point. I think um, the key that you're looking for is Muster for Battle. That card early on puts so much pressure that you might be able to temple the game into your favor dramatically to the point where you might not even need the big 30 damage yeah you just get them down anything. to like you know f you can 15? kill them with minions but if they're just you know at 15 health hovering oh. about like around that range and they heal yeah. with heal bot it doesn't matter because they they're still taking another round of seven another thing is unless they're holding like no cards or even one two cards you don't want to play murlocs because you buff the chance of them hitting you with like stronger Murlocs yeah. as time goes on. So you want to hold them up, like hold on to it and not play it for a while. It's like Bluegill and Murkai benefit from the War Leaders being on the board, and since they they have charge, they don't really mind too much if you play those. It's a weird, uh, it's a really weird mirror match actually. It's one of the most, I think, difficult ones to pilot properly. It reminds me a little bit more, perhaps, of the Freeze Mage Ice Block Wars. Who gets to pop who's first? That is, uh... Fr the Freeze Mage Mirror is still, I believe, more complex than this matchup. This matchup is a lot times dictated by how you sequence your draws, um, and not to mention how you're able to flip off of, like, anything. Sometimes it yeah. comes to the point where you really don't really do anything, and you just kind you of just play the vomit card. your hand and you just kind of play the pressure game, but... In this case, it looks like it's going to be a normal match. It seems that Clento's not going to waste a quality. He's just going to load up the board and try to draw. Oh, wow. A very good card. That's probably the best card that he could have asked for here. Yeah, and the thing is, Clento right now has no answer to it. Uh, Twist Over Champion will mitigate some of the damage and clean it up a little bit, but you don't want to be you know, overkilling yeah. the... It's just Consecration board. draw. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Wildfire <laughs> would have done it for you know a few turns from now, but Consecration will do the job. I mean, does he want to play it now or yes. wait one turn? Because you could just equip the weapon. There's no question that you can't. You can't afford to take a lot of pressure and get behind on board because anything you place from that point on will get answered by the board. And having the weapon pre-equipped doesn't really change too much. Okay, so Shabu willingly tosses out the Enifin. Now, the reason why this is also risky is that he gave up his coin, so and. Kalento will be hitting turn 10 before him. He's even reconsidering, like, should I do this or should I just hero power? Yeah. Or if, should I even just equip Truce over and pass? That's also a viable play as well because you are you know that Belcher and other things are a potential play for the following turn. Yeah. It's interesting because that means that I wouldn't be surprised if the list added a Thorson over time. As more and more you of these so? guys come up, Thorson makes its way in because it gets you that combo a little bit earlier. If, it, if you end up in a lot of mirror matches or you need 
uh, like anything on 9 and anything on 10, let's say, instead of going one turn later. It's interesting because Thorsten is great at combos, which is what this deck effectively is. But it's a combo deck. But you're not playing it all in one turn. It's, yeah. like, a, it's like a five turn combo deck. You're trying to play it like Murloc, sprinkle it in over different Multiple turns, turns, and then finally you have the the big shebang. It's like the big reveal in Master Chef. There's like seven it's like the Andy finish. It's like the, the silver platter being revealed. It's like, that Murloc was raw! <laughs> Gordon Ramsay voice. Oh, God. You know? And his name is John... No, I was, uh, yeah. I was quoting the Gordon Ramsay stuff, like how he yeah. always just yells at people in the kitchen. Why not? Get the hell out of my kitchen. You know what we need? A Murloc cook. Never mind the hungry crab. We need an actual Murloc <laughs> cook. You are awful. You're like the person that uh, lets his tiny fin Murloc die, right? I'm the guy who eats it up with a hungry crab to buff the hungry crab because it turns from a 1-1 to a plus 2 plus 2. You're heartless, man. Yeah. I try. Thankfully, not all Canadians are like that. We have... I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no worries, man. No, <laughs> one's, no one's perfect. Clanto is starting to climb ahead. and This is where Dr. Boom will truly shine. I know Nimsh was surprised to see it because he doesn't really see it that often, but this is one of the small innovations that Clanto sneaked into the deck. And it just makes a lot of sense because the game plan of Murloc Paladin is to, gen to stall, right? Yeah. And you can't really stall too effectively if you just keep having reactive cards. Yeah, like Equality Consecration being your only reliable board wipes. I it's guess. like a magnet. Yeah. The Dr. Boom demands removal, demands attention, and it also can set up really well for an anything can happen. It's so easy to transition because you deal at least, say, if it lives, you deal 7 damage. The boom bots can deal sometimes, even if they deal 5. In this yeah. deck, it's a lot. Uh, it's a really big deal. People look at the strength of Dr. Boom as I'm pretty sure Shabu will end up using the Peacekeeper here. But p they look at Dr. Boom and they look at the. Oh, sorry, he has big game. Yeah, he's course. playing BGH Derp. in the deck. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. They look at Dr. Boom and they look at the stats, they look at the boom bots, and they look at how it fits in decks like Druid, for example, like, ah, oh, that card's insane. But truly what makes Dr. Boom the, the insane card is, is that it can fit in decks like this. It can fit in decks in, like, Hunter, and you're just like, Yeah, you just, oh. you, you take the initiative because... It can it, it, even yeah. be good in these scenarios. When and aggro decks started really playing nutty. it, I realized this card was basically ubiquitously playable. Well, it looks like uh, Boombots aren't doing all the work they do against the Drakes. Always do. He has two Leon hands. The second one doesn't get played very often because you don't have enough time to. You're, you, yeah. If you have two of them in your hand and you haven't anything else to do, then you are very far behind on board. And it's a little bit too weak on tempo. This is kind of interesting because I, I I suspect this game will come down to uh, just whoever triggers the, the the combo first is simply going to feel like they're lost. Um, right. That's yeah. why you want to avoid playing Murlocs because there is a I mean it, it, there is a threshold where the first anything can have a big impact. And this is where I think in, in the mirror match Thorson is broken. Like, it's actually an insane card. Just because you can wait for that one turn where you play all your Murlocs at once, as opposed to staggering them over multiple turns, and then you get a pseudo anything just by doing so. But it's not yeah. It's not nearly popular enough right now to justify. It's not impossible. Yeah, one day, maybe. I kind of like this, uh, this kind of tempo war with nothing but wet noodles. <laughs> kind of like That's right, death by a thousand paper cuts. Yeah. Eventually, Shabu. they're going to die. I suppose you consecrate this. Uh, I, I think that's the best option here. You kill off the 3-3, three, three, consecrate, and it leaves you 5 mana. And you can even play a Pyro because you have a Pyro. But Well, now that Dr. Boone has been dealt with, yeah. why not just Peacekeeper? He's Let playing a Pyro he, he instead. Did play the, he did play the Aldor last turn as a tempo card. That's interesting. All right. Tossing in the Pyromancer as like a one damage thing. 
keeps the weapon charge healthy and doesn't have to sacrifice the, the heal sure. bot. I like it. It's all right. But he has another true silver champion. I like, I like his approach to weapon conserv conservation, though. Something that Kalenta was mentioning before, and I brought this up. If you don't have the good, efficient weapon removals, like you keep baiting out the use of it, then like a 2-4 Merc Eye is just really problematic yeah. to deal with because it just keeps hitting you and you can't really do much and it's really awkward. Well, I feel like this matchup as well, the mirror match, the weapon usage is very important since you're looking to get that extra bit of damage to push them over the edge when the combo comes down. Sure. Uh, whereas if you don't have that extra 4 damage, it might be uh, a really huge difference. I was thinking of a Pyromancer Lay on Hands play, but I think that would make him overdraw. I think he would be exactly a 10 and then has nothing sure. else to draw. And yeah. that's not what he wants. And a fun fact for people to learn is that if you burn a Murloc through overdrawing, that doesn't count. So yeah. the anything can happen. If Murkai, for example, here died, that wouldn't go into the next anything can happen. It's played. Because it's, it's just a burn. It's not... Like it died. Yeah, yeah, Even though it looks like no it died. Death, yeah. Even though, by all means, it would die if it was realistic because so it, it went in flames. What was the card drawn? Yeah. So, Xiaobu is playing the Keeper of the Grove to maintain tempo, and that's fine because you're not really, you're not really removing big targets. The only big targets is like a twelve attack Murloc, and you're dead usually when that happens. Yeah. The thing is, you're not giving them either a good anything can happen. At all. Like, this Murkai dying now, it'll die at some point, so it doesn't matter too much when it does. We should take an inventory check, though. Two Warriors have been played, and... One Murkai. And one Murkai, so that is a 9 attack Murloc. 9 damage for 10 mana. Yeah. It's like a slightly worse Pyroblast. And it just keeps getting better. A third war leader now... Klanto has to be very cautious with how he proceeds to do this. <laughs> War leader pyro equality. <laughs> Just li leave it at that, and then you counterplay. No, that would actually... That's suicide. It's not suicide the quite there. Make anything but very good, because then he has 14 damage. He needs the other pyro in hand to be able to use the other equality to kill right. that first wave of murlocs and hope he doesn't get, you know, one two, mm -hmm. one two punched. Right, there is a scenario where you can play anything and chain them if you know your yeah. opponent is low on resources and they have to deal with the board twice in a row. As long as they're not going to counter anything you, and then you lose everything. Or everything. Clanto, what are you going to do? This is pretty tricky. Is he going to use one of the equalities? I feel like you kind of have to clear this board and set up your own anything. If if uh, uh -oh. if Shabu goes for slipping a little bit, I think he missed two damage. Yeah, he didn't attack with the Silverhand recruits. Uh -oh. I don't know if he's going to play the Murloc. Yeah, I like holding on to it because then you're starting entering dangerous territories. Because now you, if you play a Murloc, you're guaranteed a seventh board minion by the second any fin. So you have to be very cautious with how things. Go. From here, Xiaobu picks up a quality. He's not going to really need it. He might end up using... I don't know if you could use... The Lay on Hands. Lay on Hands here. I mean, that's pretty much the only card you could use. But if you use it, then you have to play... Uh, you do end up being maxed on cards. Because you end up at 10, so you'd have to play Wild Pyro afterwards. Or prior to it, depending. Uh, but then that means you never get a Wild Pyro equality ever again. So maybe just a boring I, see, I don't tempo mind, I don't mind the, the tempo, Aldo. We were, yeah. brought in, we were bringing it up earlier into the game. That yeah, makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. It's one of these things where you have to wonder when I'm going to have time to play this Lay on Hands. And I can understand his point of view. He didn't want to drop the Pyromancer, so he would have had a full hand. I think any fin is actually a win here if you go, if you go for it, because you get two World Leaders, Old Mercai, you go face. If he has to clear, then you win again with the second one. Because he can't counter any Finu, because all he gets is exactly yeah. what you got. Yeah, that might be reasonable. So this looks like the like win. If, uh, might be reasonable. He's counting. So if two war leaders, two, two war leaders, and a Murkai come in, that's nine damage. And you then got thirteen when with your weapon, so that's thirteen damage. This yeah, turn. but then when this, when they all come back, you get two Murkais, which are both 
Um, eight, they're 13 damage each, yeah. You can't possibly lose because the True Silver puts him at 30 yeah. damage. So we've got 30 damage guaranteed out of your second any fin here. Oh, I apologize. I miscounted. It's eight damage because uh, I, I overcounted one of the Murloc buffs. Oh, by one? So, yeah, I, th I counted like an additional Murloc, so if sure. it weren't Merc, I would be nine damage. Yeah, because anything here just doesn't... Right, so now he kills, and then you bring back uh, plus eight, plus six on the board, so that's... Oh, times two. Yeah, times two, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, he, there's so six Murlocs on the board, so there's five other Murlocs, so each Murkai goes up to 13. So it's 32. Baseline. So, yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. And then there's the plus two, plus one from each of the other ones. It so should it be 16. Even higher. It should be 16 yeah, yeah. damage. Like, you go above 30 damage with the second wave. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to count it exactly. So it's plus five because there's five other Murlocs onto the board. And then plus eight, so 13, 15. It'd be 30 damage. Yeah. 30 plus the uh, the weapon hit. <laughs> well, Kalento with the preemptive well played. Just realizing, like, yeah, you're you're in a bad spot. There's, there's almost nothing you can do, is there? Job was thinking, well, I'm going to wild pyro, equality, heal bot, yep, attack and face, and try to dead. heal myself and see if anything works, but I don't think it will. Yep. Unfortunately, he had no board to answer the Murlocs. And he doesn't actually get that, the equality. That, equality that, fail. <laughs> that is something that is a very uh, common mistake yeah, as well it's, it's to very, make. It's very normal. Yeah. Something that Nyria was pointing out is like if you ever play a matchup like Priest where you have to pyro equality your own Murlocs to avoid being entombed, never play the, <laughs> the equality. The two, yeah, equality yeah. yeah, the two war leaders. That's and correct. That's actually, it. I called it. Like, he would clear the board. I, I actually completely forgot that he would clear the board with the Wild Pyro. Right. Uh, the idea was well, that he wouldn't clear the board. The idea was he has to clear, and if he does, you still win. But well, he actually couldn't even do it. Congratulations, Kalento. You would, he's advancing in first place into the group guaranteed. This means that I believe Xiaobu is eliminated. I believe so, because next in line would be Cypher, and Cypher had a 3-0 over Xiaobu, which means that right. he had the worst loss, you could say. Yeah, so yeah. if Xiaobu won, then Cypher would be eliminated, but Kalento winning means that Xiaobu is out, and China goes. That is a tough pill to swallow, yeah. traveling so far away just to be eliminated here, but congratulations again to Kalento. He advances to the next round. With the best score. 3-0 on the group. There it is, the man of the moment. Playing his decks with nine, with very high precision. I would say 95% yeah. uh, accuracy. The things that he missed, like... Two damage. The two damage, like, ah, yeah. come on. That's not really the difference The rogue play there. was impressive. Yeah. I, I thought the rogue play was really impressive from the beginning to the end, because it seemed like every turn he made, he knew right. absolutely what he had to do to beat the uh, Murloc Paladin already. And the, the deck, I want to say, is pretty young, all things considered. So That's right. It's pretty we learned a lot of things. Yeah. Again, yeah. remember anybody who's trying to kill their own Murlocs in matchups where you need to, like, you know they have major, like, polymorphs yeah. and stuff. Make sure you don't play it too early because you just it's very I really like that though. The, like the transformation effects become so much more important. And if yeah. ever we get mid range shaman back with hex, then suddenly Murloc Paladin is almost an on true. a non issue because you hex it then you're good to go. It's true. It's yeah. one of those very few strengths of the mid range shaman true. these days. <laughs> So guys, uh, we're going to go ahead and just break down what Good. happened today in terms of the games. Kalento ended up in first place with the 3-0, and then we had uh, several people end up 1-2. But because of yeah. game score, Cypher and Dog end up moving on. That's great, because I know Dog was feeling really down on himself. Yeah, I mean, you could tell that losing yeah, and exactly. just like, ah, the sucks. first two games being, the two matches that is feeling yeah. so, uh, so bad. Yeah. Um, but instead, they are seeded into the round of six or the qu quarterfinals, and then they play, instead of playing four quarterfinals, we play two, and then we play two yep. semifinals and the finals. So we'll have six players tomorrow, three from each group, with one of them being eliminated today. Now, we'll have to see who goes through in Group B tomorrow. Stensifka was the winner of the first uh, season, was mm -hmm. last season, actually, ended up getting the title. So if he, if he wants to get that one just as badly with the amount of money on the line as well, um, that, that might be right. a little bit of a motivator as well. And we have Surrender from Navi, which is really interesting to see how he's doing with yeah. his new team motivating. Jab from Hearthlytics and from the USA, and uh, Shangzi from China, another member there. So yeah. another good mix of diversity from every region, EU, NA, and Asia, and China. China In fact, as one well. is basically one from everywhere, pretty much. like a yeah. BlizzCon group. 
So really cool stuff overall, man. I've had a really good time so far. Yeah. So uh, we're going to see you guys tomorrow for the second part of this. It's going to be over three days, so it's not going to be the end tomorrow. Sure. We'll be back at 1500 yep. uh, Central European time, so make sure to mark your calendars. Thanks so much from Frodan, Noxious, Nash, and everyone here in Minx, Belarus. Thanks for so much for watching, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a nice one.